Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about testing. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Hi Frederick, what are the advantages of writing test tests using the test first approach as opposed to the code first approach? Well, I'm not necessarily going to say that you're talking about test driven development versus just regular unit testing, but let's uh, let's say that it is test driven development because the test first approach is the essence in test driven development so i've made a few videos about this as well the at least from my perspective the reason why the test first approach might be more useful than the code first approach has to do with how honest you are when you're writing your own test so the to me, it's it's a fact. It's an empirical fact that most software developers absolutely suck at testing, and they suck. One part is because most of them don't do it, and I'm not just talking front end or something like here. I'm just I'm talking across the board. Most software developers don't uh, do well with testing, and it is as I've said before as well. It's a skill to write good unit tests, and the skill that you need to master as a person who's writing unit tests is that you have to understand what is relevant to test for, what brings value. So an example, if we talk about, I've, I've tried to have this little speech of mine with the front end developers that I work with, when they ask me, well, what should I test for? And I go, well, ask yourself, what is it that you have to test on, say, a form? Well, I usually, they usually come up with, oh, well, maybe that the fields are there, or maybe that I can, like, click a button and submit the form and I go, yeah, that would be one case, for example. The fields are not so important, they are going to be testing, you're going to infer the, their existence just by doing the thing that you should be doing, which is test that the form can be submitted. That basically means that when you're writing a, a test for the form, you need to know, all right, here is the say username, like say it's a login form or something like that. Okay, here's the field for the username, here's the field for the uh, for the password. If you enter those two things and then you hit the, the submit button, does the form submit? That's a unit test. But then you also have to think about what it means to submit something. Well, a submit event can be handled in with a return key as well. So now you have to check that it's actually doing that. Because the classic one that many developers make is that you don't use the form tag, for example when you're creating a form you use a div or something like that and then that event is no longer there because the browser doesn't see this as a form so that's a unit test another one would be have you tested that you see an error message if somebody inputs incorrect values does the error show when you expect it to things like that these are the sorts of things that you're looking at like we basically when you try to uh, as, at least for the front-end developers I try to tell them that try to picture the form in your head when you're writing the unit test and try to do the interactions that you expect and see that they are happening correctly it's exactly the same thing for back-end developers if you're say, doing say a uh, some mocking or you're trying to interact with an, one of your functions or uh, an endpoint or something like that, submit the request, like use, the, think as a user, use your code and think about all, if you d imagine that you didn't write that code and you want to check that it works correctly and write those test cases. The reason why people argue for test first here is because most software developers don't have the mental, like they don't really have that talent for just sort of forgetting about how they implemented their code when they wrote it. So if you know what the code looks like before you write the test, you very often find that software developers just test arbitrary things because they don't fully understand what it is that they're supposed to check for. This is what I was saying. Like I had an interview with a, and this was a junior software developer. I swear to you, she had a better understanding of how to write good test cases than any any senior I've ever talked to. She was so on the money on this one. Like she understood fully that, she, and she actually said those words. She said that I find that it's like difficult to, to some developers like they don't test for relevant things. They don't actually check the things that are important. And I go, you know, I agree. 
Most developers just write arbitrary tests because they don't think about the testing in the correct way. The testing is not just there to test that there's a get function or that a certain method was called, things like that, unless that specific method is a stub to a specific network call. It is there to test the intended functionality of the thing that you're doing. And that is why most swear about swear for, uh, for test-driven development when you want to achieve that, because if you have no code, then the unit test acts as your specification of what that code is supposed to be doing. And that's powerful, because that means that you can't cheat. It's difficult to think that way, and that's why test-driven development doesn't get adopted in the industry at large. Like, most people don't do it. I know that as well, for a fact, because I've never seen... I've met one or two developers in my day now that actually does it, or claim to do it, but nobody, like, never... Oh, I've never seen it in the, at scale, at the very least. And the reason being because it's difficult to think in that way, because of this thing that I'm talking about. You don't have the code in your head, so you don't know what to test for. And as I've said to many of my, uh, like the people that work with me, I've said, you don't have to do test-driven development to write good tests, but you do have to understand the difference of just arbitrarily testing your implementation and testing the functionality that you want the consumer to know about. In other words, when you create an interface, an endpoint, the UI component or whatever, if you use that thing, what do you as the consumer expect it to happen? And if you can detach your way of thinking from, oh, I know this thing about this component, basically it's, big, it's the white box uh, versus black box idea. You should treat your, your abstraction as a black box where you don't fully know exactly how it works inside. You pretend at the very least, and then you write tests that just checks the interface or the like the yeah well the interface basically the abstraction itself for the things that you would have expected it to do had you just you know, imagine you're testing a third-party library that you didn't write this code you just want to check that it actually does the thing that it's supposed to be doing when you do something when you interact with it if you can do that then there is no real in my opinion benefit to the test first approach or into test driven development it's just as I said very few people manage to do this and that's why some people preach this as a religious thing and I can understand that I do believe that it's not necessary if you have this ability it's just that for people who want to get into that mindset you if to, to learn how to do it well you be, you should practice that uh, uh, until you get to a point where you can actually write the code first and then realize that yeah okay now I forget about the code I wrote here's the test that I need to write for that thing because there's a benefit to that as well in my opinion and that is that when you write your tests first that doesn't necessarily mean that you know all the test cases to write which is a classic one the, like if you don't write the test for the thing that you want to work, then you might you, then you're not going to uh, have a, a a coverage that uh, can secure the fact that this thing is working. Because if you just forget about it, you don't really know. Then, well, then there's no test for it. And the test first approach usually is, is the same thing as documentation or things like doing upfront planning. You know more when the code is written than you did when you do the test first approach. And many people will say, well, then you should just update your tests and so forth and so forth. And you can absolutely do that. Um, but then you have to have this bounce back between, you know, here's some tests, I write some code and get new insights, then I write some more tests and you go back and forth, which you can do as well, of course. But I argue that usually the nicest compromise is between you know, between these things is that you write the code you can write the tests after you have implemented the code because that's the state where you will know the most about your implementation but if you have to be able to do it honestly enough that you're actually testing for what is relevant so what I want you to take away from this is that uh, the benefit of using tests first is usually that you are going to write better tests than if you don't. And the simple reason being that most software developers uh, are not able 
to test for what is relevant they focus on their own implementation because now they know how the code works it's the same thing I tell people when you want to create a reusable component or a reusable class or something like that then you can't design the the interface that you're creating or the abstraction with the entire rest of the code base in mind which is a classic one where oh I can make these assumptions about my code at this level because I know how the rest of the system is working because as I said if the rest of the system changes then your abstraction or your assumptions are no longer longer correct this is the same sort of situation if you know how the implementation work works and you start writing tests that just arbitrarily checks that the implementation behaves in the way that you wrote it then you're not doing the right thing what you should be doing is to detach yourself and look at you as a consumer of the thing that you just wrote as a person who didn't write the code and say alright this form for example should behave this way I expect it to do these things if I do that this function should do these things if I do that and you try those cases out and that's the essence in my opinion of why uh, test driven development is very useful because if you do test driven development you are basically guaranteed to write a, you're, you're, you're forced to write better tests than if you have code first but you can skip this as well if you really know what you're in yourself in your heart of hearts that you are honest enough to write test cases that test the stuff that matters and doesn't focus so much on the implementation have a great day